Bob Dylan just sold his entire music catalog for an estimated $300 million. A writer at the Rolling Stone heard that it's actually closer to $400 million. Did Bob Dylan just sell out? Before we begin, let me know in the comments down below, did you think that Bob Dylan sold out by selling his entire music catalog, especially for a whopping $300 million? When I read the news earlier this week, I was absolutely shocked. Bob Dylan is one who has fought to maintain control over his work throughout his entire career, and also to make sure that his work is being used in a way that he or his fan base does not find inappropriate. He has never struck me as a money first, art second type of guy. Regular viewers of the channel will know I have very little love for Bob Dylan, but there is no denying the man deserves respect for just how expansive his catalog is and his innumerous contributions to songs throughout several decades, many of which reached number one. And regardless of my feelings towards his work, he always has seemed to have artistic integrity. So what would drive him to sell his entire catalog of music, especially to Universal Music Group, who are notoriously excellent at being awful people? If you need a reference for how bad UMG is, go ahead and look up UMG Fire. Rick Beato did a great video on this. I highly recommend watching that. They are probably the last organization I would trust with maintaining artistic integrity of an artist's catalog, even though they claim they're going to be tasteful with how they use it. Yeah, okay. I trust you as far as I can throw the freaking planet, dude. But I don't want to get too sidetracked. Believe it or not, artists selling most of or their entire catalogs is actually a relatively normal practice that I wasn't even aware of. Music labels and private interests have been buying up songs for a long time now, but it seems to have supercharged over the last four years, especially with the new viability of the streaming economy. Yes, you heard me right. The viability of the streaming economy. The streaming economy is extremely viable for business if you're a music publisher. Don't believe me? I addressed this in my Don Henley Senate testimony response video, I guess you could call it. Would you be shocked to learn that publishing companies and music labels make more than 50% of all of the revenue pulled in on a stream? So yeah. It's very viable. As a matter of fact, there are record number revenues for the industry. Either way, getting distracted again. The point is, it is a very viable revenue source and all of the work is done for you up front. You don't have to find someone to make the music, so it's passive income. Investing money into purchasing rights to things for guaranteed passive income it is a smart business decision. Hypnosis Songs Fund, that's a private British company, has claimed to have spent $670 million buying up songs between March and September of this year. Buying up from artists like Blondie, Rick James, Barry Manilow, just to name a few. Last week, Stevie Nicks sold a majority stake in her songwriting catalog to Primary Wave Music for $80 million. So it is not completely unprecedented for artists, especially as they near the end of their lives lives to part with the rights of their catalog. And if you're towards the end of your life, it's not necessarily a terrible decision. You're most likely going to be making more money up front than you would if you waited that amount of time before you croak. But Bob Dylan never seemed like the type of guy to really care about money. I mean, yeah, obviously he likes making money just like the rest of us, but it's never seemed like something he's put a serious emphasis on in his personal life. Rather, he's written many songs about the pitfalls of corruption and greed. So what would motivate him to exchange his catalog for over $300 million, something that a lot of society and culture holds in high regard? He won a Pulitzer Prize for some reason. Look, the point is, his work and how his work is used is very meaningful to a lot of people. Especially considering that he's 78 years old, I don't see the guy getting that far past 90. He was already extremely rich for being so prolific and so well regarded. His net worth before this was $350 million estimated, and he also was making yearly $15 million estimated just from royalty revenue, 15 million a year. I've seen people speculating that one of the spikes this year in artists selling their catalog is coronavirus. A lot of these people aren't gonna be making any new hits. They have like a handful of these singles that did really well. And the only way they can really make money is going on tour. Bob Dylan sitting around doing nothing and collecting $15 million a year 
does not sound like someone struggling through the coronavirus. After discussing the situation with a few friends and after doing some thinking about how I perceive his character, I think I came to a more likely conclusion. This is speculation, this may not be the reason, but what I'm about to say actually makes some sense. Like I'd said, he's 78, He's not gonna be spending $300 million in 12 years unless he plans on donating it, which would be really cool. A man his age is probably getting his post-mortem affairs in order and organizing how his estate will be dispersed upon his eventual demise, God rest him. Trying to split up ownership of the catalog or divvy up portions of the catalog to distribute between the family would be an absolute legal nightmare. I've spoken with a friend of mine who has done artist management. He was managing these bands after they already had a long catalog of a bunch of songs that were all co-owned by every band member individually. Then one band member wants to quit or is fired. The legal mess that that creates is really a giant pain in the butt and you will end relationships with those. If you're Bob Dylan, it makes more sense just to liquefy the assets, that is, sell the catalog for cash, and then take those dollar amounts and divvy them up very clearly in a will. Especially when you consider that he has two ex-wives and nine children, that would be a gigantic mess to avoid. Less heartache and fighting between the family, and there's no risk of the family abusing your catalog by selling it to something that Bob Dylan would have never sold it to. I mean, hey, if it's inevitably gonna be abused, why not have it done by people that we already know are giant pieces of crap? It just makes sense to make it easier the whole way around. So no, I don't think Bob Dylan is a sellout. I think he's most likely trying to make it easier to put his affairs in order before he eventually has to leave this earth. And frankly, it seems like a very smart move. Look, I feel a lot of ways about Bob Dylan's art, but I would have never called him dumb. And who knows, he may donate a ton of it. We'll see. Why do you think Bob Dylan sold his catalog to UMG? Is it because he's getting his affairs in order? Is he gonna donate a ton of it? Is he just Mr. Burns incarnate and we haven't seen it this entire time? He's just gonna hoard it, spend it all. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you liked the video, leave a like. If you're new here, hit subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. If you wanna help me keep making badass videos for you, you can support me on Subscribestar. Link to that in the description. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on.